So you have questions about writing off college education costs. Hi, Bob Jennings here to try to discuss for you the three main areas that we're able to write these costs off. The tax deductions and credits available for higher education costs are quite confusing, so we need to start by understanding what the difference is. There are two tax credits available and one tax deduction available. Let's start by reminding you, if you don't know, a tax credit is always better than a deduction. Why? Let's say that you have $1,000 due on your tax return. If you have a $1,000 tax credit, you get to write it off dollar for dollar. You will have no balance due. If you have a $1,000 deduction, however, you will take the $1,000 deduction, multiply it times your tax rate, and that is all the savings that you will get. So, for example, if you owe a thousand and you have a thousand dollar deduction and you're in the twenty percent tax bracket, you'll only knock two hundred bucks off that tax bill. You'll still owe eight hundred dollars. So the credits are almost always better than the deduction. Let's look at the best one to start. The two thousand and nine tax stimulus bill, the first element of President Obama's new tax package, included a replacement of the old Hope credit. There was a college credit in prior years known as the HOPE credit that had a number of limitations. Well, effective for tax years 2009 and 2010, the HOPE credit has been replaced with the American Opportunity Tax Credit. This credit has a number of unique features which make it clearly the best credit of all. For example, it is the only credit for which you may actually even receive a refund. The other credit and deduction are limited to the amount of tax that you may owe, but the American Opportunity Credit allows up to 40% of the credit amount to be refunded. Second, the credit has a much higher benefit than either the other two items. The American Opportunity Credit allows you a maximum credit of $2,500 against your tax. Now here's how it's computed. You're allowed a credit of 25% of the second $1,000 you pay, but what's really important is you're allowed a credit of 100% of the first $2,000 you pay. In case I confused you, let me repay, restate this. If you spend $5,000 to send your child to school this year, here's how it's going to work. The first $2,000, you get a 100% credit on that. The second $2,000, you get a 25% credit. So $2,500 maximum. Bad news, if you spend more than five grand, sorry, there's nothing else we can really do on it. So our second main feature is you get a $2,500 credit that is partially refundable to the tune of 40%. Third, the only credit that allows this, the only deduction that allows this, it applies to college costs that you pay for tuition, fees, and books. See, most of our other credits and write-offs don't allow any credit for books. Now, nothing is allowed for room and boards. So let's make sure we're clear on that. But the American Opportunity Credit does allow you to take a credit on the book costs that you incur during the year. Any other characteristics of the American Opportunity Credit? Yes. It's applicable to the first four years of education study after you graduate from high school. Now, this could be college, technical school, etc., but it's the first four years after you leave high school. Additionally, the individual has to be a full-time student for at least half of the year to be able to get the credit. Any bad news? Two things. If you've had the misfortune to have been convicted of a felonious drug offense, that taxpayer qualifying student doesn't qualify for the credit. That's not a big one. The big one is this. The American Opportunity Credit phases out as your income goes up. $80,000 is the threshold single. If you make more than that, you start losing the credit. $160,000 is the threshold on a married filing joint return. You make more than that, you start losing the credit. In summary then, the American Opportunity Tax Credit, new for 2009 and 2010, $2,500 maximum, 40% of which may actually be refunded. It applies to anyone who is a full-time student for the first four years after high school who go at least half of the year full-time. They are allowed to get that $2,500 and it applies to tuition, fees, and books, but not room and board. And finally, it has a fairly high phase out and it will not qualify for individuals who have been convicted in the past for a felonious drug offense. The second credit is the lifetime credit. It's nowhere near as good as the American Opportunity Credit, but there are situations where it will apply. First, it is non-refundable. Remember the American Opportunity, you get up to 40%. Second, it's limited to $2,000, where the American Opportunity Credit is $2,500. Third, it uses a much, much, much lower phase-out. 
The American Opportunity Credit says the phase out doesn't even start single until 80 grand. Well, the lifetime credit starts phasing out in the mid $50,000 range single. The American Opportunity Credit phases out starts at 160,000 married filing joint. Bad news, the lifetime credit starts phasing out in the mid $90,000 range on a married filing joint return. The lifetime credit applies to tuition and fees, but not books, not room and board. Now, here's something that does make the lifetime credit better, however. You remember with the American Opportunity Credit, we said it only applied for the first four years after high school. The lifetime learning credit is just that. It applies to your lifetime. I don't care if you're going for bachelor's, master's, postdoctoral degree, MBA, whatever, part-time adult education, it applies to all, and you don't even have to be a full-time student. You can take one class and you'll qualify for the lifetime credit. All right, so we understand the two credits. Our last item is the tuition and fees deduction. Now, you only use this one as a last resort. Why? First, because it's a deduction rather than a credit. Second, you've got a number of limitations that apply. You're allowed to deduct up to $2,000 on a single return, $4,000 on a married return for tuition and fees. Again, no deduction for books, room, or board. Second, it has a pretty low phase out. It starts phasing out at $150,000 or $60,000 on a married filing joint return, about the same as the American Opportunity Credit for both single and married, but a credit, remember, is always better than a deduction. Any other issues here on the tuition and fees deduction? No, let's just summarize it. You're allowed a deduction, a credit's always better. You're allowed 2,000 single, 4,000 joint, it applies literally to any tuition related costs that you incur, and it will apply to any undergraduate or graduate education that you incur. I realize this is a very difficult topic to understand. For further information, please visit our website or contact us at the phone number at the bottom of your screen. Bob Jennings, thanking you for listening and talking to you again soon.